We start off with Yuta Okotsu's domain explanation, all-encompassing unequivocal love. Basically, it's like we thought, the sure hit of his domain can be any curse technique that he has copied, which one, that is crazy for somebody with the arsenal and trusting friend group Yuta has, and two, it's a shame the group doesn't just say to hell with Megami and let Yuta put the curse technique he used at the end as the sure hit, that would have been nasty work and even would have caught Sukuna off guard. We also learned that each katana only has one use for being burnt out. The number of katanas is infinite so he can use the ability more than once, he just has to use it through picking up a different katana. The caveat to that, he doesn't know what curse technique is in each katana until he picks it up. Yuta later in the chapter double fist swords to look for a specific curse technique but we'll get into that later. Good thing Yuta didn't copy a bunch of shitty curse techniques. Imagine the first two swords he picked up was Udahime and Gakuganji's. Yuta'd have the inside of the barrier into a Meg Thee Stallion concert with Rika dropping it like it's hot. Before we continue, a word from our sponsors. It's me. I'm the sponsor. Be a buddy, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Enjoy the rest of the video. Yuta opens this chapter with sending three little smooth brain offspring of Rika Shigigami at Tsukuna. And we can tell this is Drew's technique right away. Yuji throws two punches at him, blocked. Now Rika comes down to thump him on the head and when Tsukuna backs up he takes damage from the back. And that's when he realizes the path of the Shikigami create a barrier and that's what it was. So he was even caught off guard by something minor like that that basically has almost no effect to him. Which I think that plays a part into Yuta Stinkin later in the chapter. But now we see him use another ability and of course it's one of his more favorite new techniques, Uros, which is a really good technique to have against Sukuna. And I think it's really interesting how they lock eyes here. You see Sukuna smirking like doesn't have a care in the world while Yuta's tapped in. Sukuna begins to think to himself that after his fight with Gojo, he still can't expand his domain and his healing is sluggish. As well as after every the gauntlet he's been through, his total curse energy matches Yuta. Yuta said it himself when Gojo fought Sukuna that Sukuna had double the amount he had. Crazy gauntlet Sukuna's gone through and he's 50%. On top of that, maintaining Hollow Wicker Basket renders him unable to do the world bisecting dismantle. We cut back to see Rika palming Yuji like a javelin and she's Leonidasing this dude at Sukuna. We now see that Sukuna has to be weary of Yuji. As Yuta comes back in the fight by uncovering the sky manipulation, he takes a swipe at Sukuna but it's blocked as well as Yuji's kick. And we get the rest of Sukuna's thoughts. He says it's the same logic behind his effective attacks against the patch face cursed spirit. I do like that he doesn't even name Mahito even though Mahito was a beast. That Sukuna stays 10 toes and only recognizes people by name if they're worth. He continues thinking Yuji can sense it. He's aiming directly for the barrier between my soul and Megami's. He's rousing Megami's soul that was submerged by the bath and disrupting the harmony between this body and myself. Every time I take a blow from him, my cursed energy output falls and the control over the body weakens. And they'll just keep chipping away at that until he can't maintain Hollow Wicker Basket anymore. And then Jacob Slatter would take effect and destroy the cursed object inside Megami. Yuji, even though his kick was blocked, he looks like he gets him in an arm lock to try and break Sukuna's arm. But unfortunately, that means Sukuna can also touch him. And we see the cleave start to turn Yuji into a Chick fil A French fry. Then we see Yuji using another ability he's familiar with, and that's Cursed Speech from Inumaki. Then he quickly picks up another one and Bang Sukuna out with a thin icebreaker. Shout out to Uro again. Then Rika comes up for the high Q spike cleanup, bops his ass, and it's off to the races for Yuta and Yuji. But Sukuna isn't having that. With the flick of the wrist, bang, dismantle pops in and tears them all up. Sukuna back in his thoughts. Man, this is how you could tell Sukuna's at least feeling it a little bit. This man's thinking a lot. Got, got him pondering. He says, if I don't make direct contact, I won't leave a fatal wound, just as it was with him. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they surpass him in toughness. He's talking about Ishigori and I have no problem with Ishigori glaze. Sukuna continues, it's not just because of my diminished curse energy output from the fight with Satoru. 
all of the sorcerers that have shown up from Jujutsu got extremely tight defenses now. He brings up Yuji's reverse curse technique, talks about Yuta's domain with the sure hit affecting only him and not everyone inside. Wondering if he had that from the beginning and says it requires a very sophisticated barrier technique. And I love this interaction, even though Sukuna's face looks like a fucking house. And he, well, he asks <laughs> Yuta and Yuji, what have they been to the past month? And they both begin to say with Yuji saying hard work and determination. And Yuta says we cheated, cutting each other off going, oh. But the fact remains, if it weren't for the after effects of his battle with Gojo, we wouldn't have a second to spare to use our reverse curse techniques. He would have had annihilate us in an instant. Game is game. And then Yuji says, it pains me to admit it, but we're up against the strongest sorcerer right now. I don't even want to think about what'll happen if we can't stop him here. The fighting recommences. They all push Sukuna to attack him. Rika on one side, Yuji on the other side throwing a punch. That leaves Sukuna's middle wide open. And there it is, a new ability being seen and it's actually Charles. The ink is already dry, so that clairvoyance allowed him to duck a punch and then fucking wall up Sukuna. Yuji does what Maki did and thrust his fist into Sukuna to push him back. But he has that Kamehameha vibe to him. Pretty dope panel right there. Sukuna in his thoughts again. Angel's curse technique. Uro's curse technique. A curse technique with the barrier of the path of Ishikigami. Drew's curse speech in Umaki's. Charles rounding up the fifth one for clairvoyance. Sukuna then says... The Limitless? No, nah, he shouldn't be able to control it without the six eyes. Has he played all his cards? We see that they have been planning something. Yuta says even Sukuna will be caught off guard by a technique he hasn't seen used. This goes back to my point about Drew's technique kind of catching Sukuna off guard. So Yuta's confident this will work. He finally grabs a katana he's been looking for. This is where he's double fisting here. He says this is the one. There must be so many Uro Katana in there because he's using that one like crazy. That pull rate must be on like an Akari level. So he uses the sky to cover himself as a cloak and then that's when he goes to stab at Sukuna but he catches it of course. Cleave. And he thinks this is my... And then bang. The chapter ends there. Bitten by his own fangs. And we see Sukuna's face start to get cut up. And we know his RCT is sluggish right now. His output's low. Yuji's still right there for the follow-up. This is generational stuff here for Yuta fans. My boy, Tsukuna is unfortunately my number two and Yuta's my number three. But I mean, I am aware that Tsukuna is the big bad and it's a shonen, so he's gonna go down eventually. The other side of Tsukuna's face, those other two eyes just be cockeyed looking at like a drink machine or something. But that's it. That's the chapter there. Um, a lot of cool stuff. Yuta, Yuta's domain is crazy. Sukuna is a monster still. It's hard to think that this actually is the end for Sukuna, even though if they're equal to each other in cursed energy and his cursed energy output in reverse curse technique is uh, sluggish right now, Yuta using the cleave, you know, if they're equal cursed energy and the output's there, and he uses cleave, it should scale up to Sukuna's what he has left. But I think we all know that Sukuna isn't done here. It'll be really, really interesting to see how this goes. Because I personally can't think of a way. You know, every Shonen series usually gets an announcement towards the end saying, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen will end in five chapters or ten chapters. You know, there's usually something like that. And we haven't gotten that yet. Which I think Jujutsu Kaisen being the, the big thing out of the Shonen Jump magazine right now will definitely play that up, that announcement up. So this isn't the end, of course. Another thing I want to bring up is when Yuta said we cheated, that kind of, and I'm sure people have theorized it by now, I know I'm late in getting this uploaded, but Mio's domain is the perfect hyperbolic time chamber allowing others to go in a domain to train as long as he has someone to sumo with. I can see that being the case. We also get that there's no break next week, which is super fire. Sukuna's whole gauntlet since 222 or whenever it was has been fire. There's things that you may not like inside of it, you know, but this specific part in the gauntlet is fuego. Well, thanks for staying for the whole video. Remember, like, subscribe, stay normie, stay weeb, shit, even in between is fine. Until next time, peace.